practice and who. Uh, and so we're gonna get started here in just a second, but while we are waiting, Ask Aetna is our education network at Access Lex. It is a hub, a, a, a platform that houses um, all of our content, tools, programs, resources, services that we offer free to you as a law school student. So if you have never created an account before, take the, the next couple of minutes to do so. It takes just a few seconds. It's free. And uh, that's going to open up your world to a lot of the, the programs and resources that we have available available to you as a law school student. Okay. All right. I see more of you getting signed in. Thank you so much for having us here. So my name is Leandra Ross and I come to you along with my colleague, Kamisha Little, who's on the line with me uh, from Access Lex Institute. We are a nonprofit legal education organization that's been around almost 40 years. Next year, we will be celebrating 40 years of existence. And um, like I said, we're a legal education organization. We were started by legal professionals and we continue to provide uh, tools, resources, programs for you to be a successful law school student and preparing you for life after law school. Ask Edna is our education network at Access Lex. And so it is free to you to set up an account. You are going to have access to a ton of resources that we create specifically for you as a law school student. So take the time to get registered. I think Kamisha is going to drop in the chat panel, at least the Zoom chat panel, um, the link for Ask Edna if you want to click on that link and get registered. So today we are going to be talking about student loan repayment. And then we're gonna conclude. I'm gonna take about 40 minutes to talk about that. And then I'm gonna transition over to my colleague, Kamisha, to talk to you about our Helix uh, Bar Review Program. She's gonna demo that for you. And then we are giving away some of those. And so it's exciting to be able to do that. Let's get started because we have a lot to unpack. So if you, I think some of you are in Zoom, if you could drop for me in the chat panel, I like a little engagement. So tell me what law school you attend and what year you are at that law school. I like to know who's in the audience um, as we're talking through this. So I'm, I'm hopeful we got some, some 1L, some 2Ls and some 3Ls um, with us. Drop that in the chat panel. And you're probably, you know, thinking about the investment that you have taken on for your law school journey and will continue to do so. And I really want you to listen to this information from a lens of empowerment. We are going to be empowered through education. Okay, it is not fun to talk about finances. It is not fun to talk about student loan repayment, especially, but we want to be informed. We want to be educated. Uh, and it looks like we've got some free law students here as well. So thank you for being here, deciding on a school. And uh, so, you know, borrowing for law school is, is definitely going to be uh, an investment and think of it as a, a return on your investment. And so we wanna make sure you are an informed borrower uh, when it comes to um, your education. We do always have a legal disclaimer that we say before everything we do. And that's just to say that the information provided in Access Lex events, such as this one, and any other Access Lex resources is being made available to assist you in developing your personal financial strategy and is not intended as investment, tax, or legal advice. You should consider whether the information is appropriate for your needs and where ap ap applicable seek advice from an appropriate professional advisor. So I'm an accredited financial counselor. I can talk with you on a wide range of financial topics. But in our conversation, if we get into the weeds of investing or tax planning or preparation or anything where you actually might need to consult with a lawyer, I'll let you know what I know about those areas, but I'll let you know you might benefit from adding those professionals to your conversations. Okay, I'm going to take a quick pause because I see y'all are engaging in the chat panel and that excites me. We've got some three L's. Penn State Law, thank you for being here. UNT Dallas, a three E this evening. Thank you for being here. A one L from Northeastern. 
Thank you for being here. So keep them coming. I know it's many of you here. So let us know where you're, where you're attending. Be proud of that degree and the loans that you're taking out for it. <laughs> so to tell you a little bit more about who we are, uh, again, we're a nonprofit legal education organization. We've been around almost 40 years doing this thing. Uh, we focus really on three areas, the advocacy, accessibility, and affordability of legal education. And so everything we do will center around those areas. So we have um, our colleagues in DC that they do a lot of the lobbying work on behalf of law school students and graduate professional students as a whole. Um, they provide grants to institutions, to faculty, to, to administrators who want to um, produce programs around those tenants that, uh, that we advocate for. Um, and then we have a diversity pipeline program to help underrepresented students get prepared for and admitted to law school. We also have our new Helix Bar Review team that Kamisha is part of. And again, she's gonna demo our bar uh, uh, product at the end of this. And I'm just gonna pause because I hear some background noise. Kamisha, do you hear that as well? Heard the reflection. Make sure everyone is muted. Let me just take a peek. Okay, I think we're good. Awesome, okay. so. Uh, so Kamisha and her team um, are, um, you know, part of our Helix Bar, our new Helix Bar uh, uh, review program, and they produce also a lot of other content around academic success and student success. And then my area is the Center for Education and Financial Capability. Myself and my colleagues, we go around the, the country uh, providing financial education to ABA accredited law schools and their students. So some of you might be familiar with us. Um, we've come to your campuses. We're coming back to campus to do some workshops in person. And we do a lot of great work with them. I'm gonna pause again. I do hear some background noise. So I'm gonna mute. There we go, I'm unmuted now. Now, some of you attend um, a law school where we have a partnership with your law school to offer our personal finance program called Max by Access Lex. Is anyone familiar with that? Put that in the chat panel for me. If you are familiar with Max, if you've been engaging with Max, um, oh, I think we're at about 175 of the ABA accredited law schools who offer Max by Access Lex. Uh, and so if you are engaging with it, thank you so much. We developed the content for you uh, and we welcome your feedback around that. Okay, let's get into quickly student loan repayment. And the thing I need you to know specifically with federal student loans is that you have choices. And those choices are yours and yours alone. They're not your parents' choices or your loved ones' uh, choices. They're not your, your classmates or your friends' choices, um, but you have a number of choices when it comes to federal student loan repayment. Um, and so you may be feeling anxiety from the amount of debt that you're taking on, but when it comes to repayment, federal student loans are going to be some of the most flexible debt that you will have. Okay, because of the choices that you have. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Most of this is going to be centered around federal student loan repayment. Okay, so if you have any private student loans, then we can talk to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis about those private student loans, but you'll certainly wanna talk with your private bank or private lender of whom you received that loan from to talk about the options and choices you have on those private student loans. So when we think about the road to zero, that's the name of this particular workshop that we offer, the road to zero, because you wanna to get to zero in your student loan repayment. We really want to have a strategic lens. Now you already have a strategic lens because you're law school students or you're, you're aspiring to be a law school student and you have to be strategic in law school and applying to law school. The same is true with student loan repayment. So how do we do that in the journey to road to zero? We want to make sure we know where to access the right information, right? So I'm going to tell you how to do that. We also want to make sure we have, uh, we're making the right individual decision for ourselves. And that means which repayment plan do we elect? And so I'll go through each of the repayment plans with you very quickly. And then lastly, we want to make sure that we are executing our strategy because we're going to have a strategy. 
And we wanna make sure that we adjust if and when needed. As a financial coach, I think one of the things I see, uh, one of the mistakes I see people make is that when life happens or when something changes, a life event occurs, we don't revisit our goals that we set for, for ourselves, if we set goals for ourselves, and then pivot or adjust if we need to. So you need to make sure you build in time and, and the ability to do that if you, if you need to adjust your student loan repayment. Let's start with understanding how do you get the right information around your student loans. With your federal student loans, if you do not know what you have, the first place to start is the Department of Education's Federal Student Aid website, which is studentaid.gov studentaid.gov. You should be familiar with this website is where you go to complete your free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA. It is where you go to complete entrance counseling when you first take out a federal student loan. It is where you go to complete exit counseling when you're about to graduate and enter repayment. Um, there are login credentials and if you cannot recall those, there, there's a, a, a a link for you to retrieve those. But that is a great place to start if you're just trying to get an understanding of what your federal student loan portfolio looks like. If you have private student loans, however, those will not be on studentaid.gov. Those will be contained within your credit report. So normally before COVID, each of us um, is, we're normally entitled to one free credit report from each of the credit bureaus every year. Can anyone name the credit bureaus for me in the chat panel? There are three of them here in the United States. Okay, I'm seeing I'm seeing some some um, people <laughs> in the chat panel, and I'm seeing some familiar names. It's good to see your names. Okay, yes, Equifax, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. I don't have prizes to give, but you get bragging rights. <laughs> so yes. The, uh, each of us are entitled to one free credit report from the credit bureaus every year. You get that from annualcreditreport.com, which is the authority to pull those free credit reports. However, due to COVID and tied to the CARES Act that went into place in March of 2020, that was that relief package for Americans due to the pandemic, we each are actually entitled to pull our credit reports free weekly. That has been the case for a year, and that is set to expire on April 20th of this year. So while you may not need to pull your credit report weekly, if you have never pulled your credit reports, this is the time to do so. If it's been a while since you've pulled your credit reports, this is the time to do so. Before COVID, one in four credit reports contained error and errors that were impacting the credit score. We're seeing more of those errors now through the pandemic. So you certainly wanna get a handle on that. And from a character and fitness standpoint, I don't talk about that in this, in this workshop. We have other workshops where we talk about character and fitness, but you wanna make sure you're on top. If you're, if you're in a state where the bar examiners do a factor in financial responsibility, you wanna understand what's on your credit reports. And then as well as any other debt obligations that you may have, credit card debts, consumer debts, all of those are going to be contained in your credit report. So going back to where you obtain your student loan information for your federal student loans, studentaid.gov, we have a screenshot here for you. You're gonna get logged in and be able to see um, your dashboard, which will tell you how much total federal student loans you have, um, and then the breakdown of each of those loans, as well as some other valuable information. So here's a screenshot of that. Okay, and then they'll have your breakdown of your loan types. So there are there can be different types of federal student loans. Some of you might be familiar with the federal Perkins loan program, which no longer exists today. I think it was eliminated about um, five years ago, um, but you may still have those loans from undergrad. So those will be listed there. You may be familiar with subsidized loans. And unfortunately, subsidized student loans are not available at the graduate professional level anymore, but you may still have those from undergrad. So those will be listed there. And then um, your unsubsidized loans um, will be listed as well as any other types of federal student loans. I do see the question of when we pull our credit reports, uh, does that affect our credit, great question. If you are pulling your credit report, it does not negatively impact your credit score, okay? Um, there are um, soft inquiries and hard inquiries when it comes to your credit. Your soft inquiries are gonna be things like you are pulling your credit report, um, 
Sometimes you get pre-approval offers in the mail or via email. Those are examples of soft credit pools um, that are not going to impact your credit. Hard inquiries can impact your credit. So that is when you have actively applied for credit, okay? Um, and if you do too many of those things in a short period of time, um, your credit, credit score, you will likely see go down. And that's because one um, aspect of your credit score is how often are you establishing new types of credit? Okay, great question. Okay, so there's some other long details that you're gonna look out for on studentaid.gov. Just make sure you're becoming familiar with it so you know what you have, what you have and you're an informed borrower. Before I get into the different types of repayment plans, there's a, 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 um, something that you have to understand with student loans and really with any loan that you borrow and it being um, uh, a loan that accrues interest. So, with student loans and particularly at the graduate professional school level, which includes law school, the federal student loans that you borrow accrue interest while you're in school. Now, we're not counting this, this pause period where we are uh, covered by CARES Act. Um, so part of the CARES Act provided two federal student loan reliefs. One was that payments were paused. So if you were in active repayment, you were not required to make payments and we are still actively in that until May 1st of this year. The other relief provided is 0% interest on federal student loans. We are still in that period. So if you have any federal um, direct student loans, those are at a 0% interest right now. But they will resume interest um, at some point in time. And when interest accrues, it's hanging out there. But there are certain points of time within the life cycle of your loans where that outstanding interest is added into the outstanding principal, the base amount that you have borrowed. And we call that capitalization of interest. That is what grows your balance over time. So while you may not be able to address interest or pay interest before it capitalizes, um, depending on where you are in your life, it's still good to understand the terms and conditions. Because if you are ever in a position to pay down interest or pay off interest before it capitalizes, that can save you some money in the long run. Okay. So one of the most notable triggering events for, cap for uh, interest capitalization is when you officially enter repayment. Okay. So you've graduated, you get a, a one-time six-month grace period where you're not required to make payments and get yourself stable. And then once you officially enter repayment, your interest will be capitalized, okay? Um, and so it's important to understand that around capitalist, uh, about your interest. But there are other times throughout the life cycle where that can happen. If you have questions about that, I'll certainly uh, be providing you with a link where you can schedule some, some coaching appointments with us, which are free. Um, I do see the question, considering the different interest rates, is it best to practice uh, to consolidate, subsidize, and unsubsidize? Um, it really just depends. Everyone does not need to consolidate. And as time goes on, more and more people are not needing to consolidate. You do not need to consolidate your student loans if all of your federal student loans are through the di direct loan program. And you will know that because they will have the name direct in front of them. That means they are already under one program. You have one servicer. Yes, your loans are separate in that you have subsidized and unsubsidized. But when you enter repayment, your monthly payment will be comprised of the minimum monthly payment of each of those loans. So you do not necessarily need to consolidate. If you have questions about that, when I drop the coaching link, feel free to schedule a follow-up to talk more about that. Um, for the sake of time, um, definitely keep your questions coming. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get through this because we have just such a, a limited amount of time. And I want, want to make sure uh, my colleague Kamisha has time to talk about our um, Helix program. Okay. Okay, so we got the right information. Let's talk about making the right decision for yourself. Here are some questions to ask yourself before we get into each of the repayment plans. What's your career trajectory, right? That obviously is going to impact the type of student loan repayment that you choose. Um, 
If you are in get, getting into public sector work, you probably are interested in the Department of Ed's Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. So then that is then going to impact the type of repayment plan you choose so that you can make sure you get that forgiveness. And that forgiveness is you, you are able to optimize or maximize that forgiveness. When did you borrow? Because depending on how long ago you borrowed will also depend on which repayment plans you have access to. And so really if anyone who's borrowed student loans prior to 2010, um, your loans that you borrowed prior to 2010 might have different uh, repayment options available or limited repayment options available to them. Uh, what loan types do you have? So I showed you the screenshot of studentaid.gov of those different loan types. Perkins loans do not have the same type of repayment plan options as your federal direct student loans. So you'll wanna kind of talk and understand through that. Are you married? Are you thinking about getting married? Because certainly your spouse's information, their income information and how you file taxes can and will play into your income driven repayment plans. And we'll talk a little bit about those in just a moment. What is your career plan is really kind of the same as your trajectory, but also thinking about your salary trajectory and kind of estimating what you think your salary trajectory will be as best as you can, because of course that will certainly um, play into the, the repayment plan that you choose. And then lastly, which is just as important as the other ones that we just discussed, what helps you sleep better at night? Okay, and I insert the word better because I recognize that many of you may not be sleeping that much at night with your classes, but what makes you sleep better? What helps you sleep better at night? Personal finance is more personal than it is finance. And so you have to really kind of figure out for yourself, what is your financial philosophy from investing to saving to paying down debt? So debt elimination, uh, and we can talk through that. So, Really, it's easiest to think of the federal student loan repayment plans as two pots. You've got your debt-driven repayment plan pot, and you've got your income-driven repayment plan um, pot. Your debt-driven repayment plans are going to be those repayment plans where you get your, you, they take your, your total overall debt, and they construct the minimum monthly payment um, that you will be held to for the number of years tied to that respective debt-driven repayment plan. So no income information is considered. This is just about getting your debt paid off and the number of years tied to that plan, okay? The standard 10-year plan is the default plan, meaning if you do not elect another repayment plan, they will automatically put you on the standard 10-year plan. Your payment on month one is the same as your payment on month 120, consistent payment. It is under this plan compared to the other ones that I'm about to discuss, where you will pay the highest um, monthly payment on um, your loans. But it is also where you will pay the least amount of interest because you are starting out paying high payments compared to the other two that we're about to discuss. The graduated repayment plan is a 10 year plan also, but as you see, it is gradual. So unlike the standard 10 year plan, you start your payments off lower and then they gradually increase every two years. This is a good plan for someone who can't afford making a payment under a standard 10 year plan on, from the onset of repayment, um, but they can't afford the graduated repayment plan um, and, and afford for it to gradually increase. Um, compared to the standard 10 year, you will pay a little bit more in interest over time if you persist on this plan from beginning to end because you started your payments out lower. And then the, the um, extended repayment plan, I have no, um, I have no hesitation in telling you, please avoid being on this plan from beginning to end. It is a 25 year plan. There are two options within it. There's a graduated, gradual um, repayment plan for that, and then a fixed. Under this plan, if you persist on it from beginning to end, you will pay the most amount of interest over time compared to the others that we just discussed. Sometimes we do get the question about, hey, I have extra money and I wanna pay it towards my loan. Can I do that? Will there be a penalty? There will be no prepayment penalty if you decide to pay extra per month, more than what your minimum monthly payment is, or if you come across a windfall. 
a lump sum of money that you want to then pay um, down the majority of your loans or all of your loans. There's no prepayment penalty. The only suggestion we would have for you is to make sure you are in contact with your loan servicer so that you understand any special instructions that you need to take heed of when making those extra payments. Most times they're going to just tell you, go ahead onto your online account and make the extra payment. But you still want to be as communicative as possible so you understand their systems, they understand what you're trying to do, and they can tell you if there's any appropriate way for you to make that extra payment. Okay. Let's do some examples, shall we? This is probably going to suck the air out of the room. But that's not the intent. This is to be informed, to be educated. So we've got a 3L that has graduated. They borrow $50,000 each year. So they graduate with $150,000 in outstanding principal. Can you guess for me how much interest, how much interest would have accrued on $150,000 over say a three year, six month period? Because what we're doing is factoring in your three years of school and then the six months of the grace period. You don't need to know interest rates to guess. We don't need to factor in the 0% interest rate for the CARES Act. Just shoot some guesses out there. And if you feel more comfortable sending that to us directly, <laughs> you can do that. Just select the drop down box and send it to, um, send it to uh, me or Kamisha. Okay, <laughs> Kenneth said it's too much, whatever it is. You would be right, Kenneth. <laughs> $12,000, $10,000, $15,000. These are some good guesses. I wish I had some prizes. Kenneth was the, the safer answer. $21,000, y'all. $21,000. That's a lot. That's a lot. And if you are currently a law school student, also just look at the silver lining and that interest is not accruing. It did not accrue this year. I know, Ayana, I know, um, did not accrue this year. If you are a 3L right now, you have had two of your three years of no interest accruing during this time of COVID. So sometimes we got a grasp or, you know, those straws and the silver lining. So be, just, you know, kind of be appreciative of that. But so let's use the example. The student is graduating with $170,000, $71,000 of outstanding in principal. So let's take these repayment plans and break them down. These are the debt driven. I won't go line to line, but I've called your attention to two areas. The standard 10-year repayment plan. Remember, I said that's where your payment will be the highest starting out, 19 hundred dollars but look at the total amount of interest and overall total amount that you will pay so one on one hundred seventy one thousand dollars borrowed after 10 years you will pay a total of two hundred thirty six thousand but then i draw your attention down to that extended and remember i said avoid being on this plan from beginning to end and i think you can see why Oof. You're paying over $300,000 for $170,000 that you initially came out of school with, okay? I make my point, I make my point. Okay, let's move on. Before we talk about income-driven repayment plans, we do often get the question about consolidation and refinancing. So, you know, I know there was a question around that about consolidation. Again, I think most borrowers, current borrowers now don't need to consolidate. Uh, but if you have questions about that, we'll love to talk to you more one-on-one. -on -one. Private refinancing is different, however. Um, consolidation pertains to federal student loans. You can consolidate multiple federal student loans into one. Private refinancing, however, is you're still taking multiple student loans and combining them into one, but you're going through a private lender. You're applying for credit for a private refinance loan, and it can include federal and it can include your federal and your private student loans. There are pros and cons to this, y'all, and it's very specific. 
uh, to your circumstances. And so I, I, I won't go through all of the details, but if you are interested in it, we can talk more one-on-one -on -one about it. But ultimately this is just a form of debt shifting. In some instances, it can make sense to refinance, but you have to understand all of the terms and conditions that you are signing up for, okay? Because you cannot go back. You cannot go back if you take your federal loans and move them over to a private lender, okay? You also will not be eligible for loan forgiveness on those loans if you move your federal loans over to a private refinance loan. So you just got to be sure. Let me get past that. Let's get to our income-driven repayment plans. There are five of them. One of them has two options within them. Um, number one income contingent repayment plan was the only income driven repayment plan for a number of years. Number two, numbers two through four were created in the last, I would say, 10 years or so. There are some similarities, but then there are some differences between the two. Now, I'm going to take a quick pause because what I want to do is drop for you a resource in the chat panel where you can get a chart. Um, within our, um, we have a supplemental digital guide to this work for this webinar that provides you with a layout of all of these plans, including these income driven repayment plans. So I'm going to drop that in the chat panel um, for you. Feel free to download that and keep it for your records. Okay. Um, so I won't, for the sake of time, I won't go through each of these, but these are good plans if you need relief. If you need a, a payment plan that is that is manageable, your income compared to the amount of federal student loan debt you have um, is pretty low. Um, those payments are going to mimic your, your income and your household size. So they are good plans to start out on. Um, they are Great plans if you are planning to be on or receive public service loan forgiveness, because again, you want to maximize your forgiveness at the end of the day, and these plans allow you to do that. Um, if you have specific questions about them, we can schedule some time to talk further through them. Each of the income driven repayment plans do require a request form initially. And then every year you want to be on those plans, you have to recertify your income. Okay, and you do that, your lend, trust me when I tell you, your servicer will be in communication with you <laughs> when it's time to submit that information. But you need to make sure you do submit your, your most updated tax information for the next year of payments um, by the date that you are supposed to do that. If you do not submit the, the recertification of income with your servicer, that is a triggering event for interest capitalization. Remember, I talked about capitalization of interest, and there are triggering events throughout the life cycle of a loan that causes your interest to capitalize. That is a triggering event, and they will move you to the standard 10-year repayment plan because you failed to provide your information. Now, can you reapply? Absolutely. But now you have you put yourself at a disadvantage for not providing that information. Okay. The link that I drop in the chat panel for you on pages 14 and 15 of that booklet, you will have a, a, a chart of each of the income driven repayment plans along with eligibility requirements. What happens if you are married and you file jointly or file separately, whose income is going to be considered, how much of your income they're going to look at when determining your monthly payment. And then they're going to give you some, um, a chart on the, the forgiveness options uh, as, a comparison to those income-driven repayment plans or public service loan forgiveness. The thing about income-driven repayment plans is this, they are helpful when, when you absolutely need them and when you are seeking loan forgiveness. But the reality is, is that being on them will not get your loans paid off in the quickest period of time or the least amount of interest over time because of this concept of negative amortization. So this is an example of that. Let's say your monthly payment is crafted at $125 and you're like, yes, I can afford that. But the amount of interest that accrued on your loans for that month was actually $325. So your payment didn't even really touch that interest, leaving an amount of $200 of unpaid interest. That keeps getting added into the balance every month, every month, every month, every month, every month. Okay, so either you need to be getting loan forgiveness where you don't care about that, 
or you need to have a strategy in place over time to either change your repayment plan or pay more than the minimum monthly payment so you are not growing your balance over time, okay? Let's go back to that good old example, $171,000 you graduated with. Now let's add some adjusted gross income into that of 60, um, oh, my screen is blocking. I think it's $65,000, right? 60, 60,000, you can see it. <laughs> now, here are the income-driven repayment plans. Again, I won't go through each of them, but now look at that, that initial payment. That seems manageable, right? So it's a good plan to start out on if you need to gain your footing financially and your income just does not permit you to pay under a debt-driven um, repayment plan. But let's have a strategy in place if you are not seeking loan forgiveness um, so that you can ensure that you are, um, you're paying the least amount possible over time. Now, what I didn't mention, and I won't get into a lot of details about it because it's weedy, but there is a loan forgiveness option tied to income-driven repayment plans themselves, separate and apart from public service loan forgiveness. However, should you persist on income driven, the income-driven repayment plan for the 20 or 25 years tied to that plan, and you still have a remaining balance, you can get forgiveness on that. However, you will face a tax bill for that forgiven amount. It's almost like income that you've got to pay taxes on based on the way the tax laws are currently written. Could that change over time? Absolutely, but that's how it is. With public service loan forgiveness, you're giving your life's work to public service, the way the law is currently written, there is no tax forgiveness, federal tax bill that you have to pay on forgiveness. Statewide, you need to check with your state to see if there, um, if there's a tax bill that you will face for forgiveness programs, okay? And public service loan forgiveness is very specific, y'all, is very specific. There are certain things that have to be true before you can get forgiveness. The only loans that are eligible for public service loan forgiveness are direct loans, direct loans, nothing else. You have to be on an eligible PSLF repayment plan. That's any of the income-driven repayment plans because that makes sense, right? Or the standard debt-driven repayment plan. Those are the only ones. While you are doing that, you have to be in eligible employment, which includes government positions, whether federal, state, local, or tribal. You do need to be a permanent employee, not contract, and you have to work full time. All of that you do 120 times, 120 qualifying payments before you can seek forgiveness under public service loan forgiveness. We do offer a webinar to the general public called Your Public Service Loan Forgiveness Action Plan. Accesslex.org is our website. Kamisha, can you put that uh, website in the chat panel for me? Thank you. And then look for student events. Uh, and we offer this uh, webinar, I think, once at least once a month. Okay, you got the right information. You got information on making the right individual decision for yourself. Now let's talk about our strategy. If you are nearing graduation, this is the time to collect your documents, know who your servicer is, create an account with your servicer because that is where you're going to make your payment. Four to five months after you graduate, any repayment plan that you opt, that you want to be in, that is not the default standard 10-year plan. You need to make sure you do the paperwork so that it's done in time for your due date. And that's about four to six weeks before your grace period ends. Six months after graduation, you make that first payment and that's when you're gonna execute your strategy. So make sure you have your strategy in place. Some things you need to be doing on a yearly basis at least, making sure you have financial wellness checks, make sure your financial health markers are in place. If you need help with that, we can schedule a coaching appointment to do so. Income-driven repayment plans, there's paperwork required for those. And there's recertification of income that's required every year. Make sure you know that you have to do that and when you need to do that. And then public service loan forgiveness, there's paperwork involved with that as well, but that's not as pressing as these others that we have discussed. If you experience a bump in the road, again, flex, federal student loan debt will be some of the most flexible debt that you will ever take on because of what you see before you. Those income driven repayment plans really allow you to make a manageable payment. And you can even get a payment that is calculated at zero, depending on how much the gap is between your income and your total um, debt balance. But then there are also deferment and forbearance options where you can temporarily stop payment. Maybe you're unemployed, underemployed, you're experiencing some economic hardship. 
you need your payments to be paused, those um, are options, short-term options um, for your loans. We got some resources for you, accesslex.org slash calculator. That is our student loan calculator. Please use it, start to calculate for yourself what your monthly payments might look like under most all of those, all of those student loan repayment plans, okay? Okay, now, if you wanna schedule a coaching call, our Access Connects services is our free, uh, we, it used to be a student loan helpline, but now we're helping people with a lot more than student loans. We are happy to talk to you. There's the web address there for you. When you go in, schedule the appointment, you will see my profile along with my other colleagues' profile. Look at our calendars. You will see four weeks at a time when we're available. Pick a day and time that works for you and we will give you a call. Okay, you can do this as many times as you need. And lastly, we are hiring students, okay? <laughs> um, through our Access Lex Champions program, I think we may have a couple of champions on the line. We are looking to hire uh, a handful of students at each of the ABA accredited law schools to talk about all of these free resources, tools, services that we have for you. We need help getting the word out. It's too much goodness for you all not to be spreading the word. And so we are looking to hire um, some students at each of the schools. Feel free to check out that link. I think Tamisha is gonna drop it in the chat panel for you as well. We would love to work more closely with you. We know sometimes the best spreader of information is student to student, peer to peer. So we are, we, we've hired quite a few so far and we've, we've been having a good time. So if you are interested, go to that link, um, submit an application. We would love to work closely with you. All right, Kamisha, I literally came in right at <laughs> the time. It's time to turn it over to you. So with that being said, I do have the honor of turning it over to Kamisha Little, my colleague. She is our national director for our Helix Review or Helix Bar Review uh, engagement area. She is going to be demoing Helix uh for you and so i'll turn it over to her and i will stay in the chat panel i'm going to see if i can try to answer any questions um while we have time but feel free to schedule one-on-one -on -one time if you want to talk more personally about the situation thank you leandra um and thank you for this presentation like i still attend some of the uh financial webinars i will spare everybody about the fun panic story me and my husband experienced today around student loans so it really is a helpful resource that is being provided we'll talk later <laughs> It's a really helpful resource um, being provided in so much great education. So um, I am honored to be here with you all today. Uh, as Leandra mentioned, my name is Kamisha Little, and I am the National Director in the West for the Helix Barbie Engagement Team. Prior to joining Access Less, I've only been here about a year and a half, almost two years. Um, but prior to joining, I worked in law school supporting students like yourselves, uh, instructing academic support and bar uh, courses, as well as serving as the Dean of Student Affairs. And so. Um, I love and have dedicated my career really to helping students succeed and uh, achieve their goals. So I'm excited here to share a new tool and resource with you today. Um, as Leandra mentioned, she shared a lot about our organization and all the areas of focus that we have focusing in on those and academic and bar success, as well as our new initiative with Helix Bar Review is one of the new um, areas to do that. Because I saw a few 1Ls and 2Ls on the line, I know Leandra mentioned Ask Edna, which houses all of these student resources. I just want to highlight the student success and bar success resources that are there, separate and apart from any bar review course, but they're there designed to kind of help you navigate through the law school experience. And there were two things Leandra mentioned as she was talking today in her presentation about um, the road to licensure. So if you are thinking about what it takes to become licensed in your given area, we have a workshop on that that is free um, and that uh, pre premieres regularly. So you can also see that on our website on the student events page. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the bar exam. I'm going to try my best to explain things as I go through. If I use any acronym you don't know, put it in the chat. Um, continue to engage with me there, and I'll make sure I explain it. But we also have a lot of uh, webinars that will tell you all the components of the exam and everything you need to know to be successful through your bar exam journey. 
Um, and really the reason why Helix Bar Review is here, as Leander mentioned, our organization's focus and mission is your success, but specifically around access, affordability, and value of this legal education. And so a part of that is getting you all the way through law school, both admissions to this space, right, all the way to your admission to your uh, various bar area or territory where you will practice and be licensed. So is, as mentioned in the chat, there is a giveaway. Part of that affordability is we want to um, provide some relief, right? And there are six courses that we're giving away um, throughout this conference. Uh, three will happen today. So I believe your administrators from the BOSA are putting in the chat to communicate to them. Um, if you're interested, it is for a course for this administration, July 2022. Uh, and so please put that information in there and I'll pass it over to them to do uh, the giveaway at the end of our time. I want to briefly, and I have a short time too, and I forgot to start my timer, but I'm going to watch the clock <laughs> closely. Um, I want to do a brief inside look at Helix Barview so I can show you a little bit about this course. I want to start about what's the same. If you've done any research, I see there's a lot of three L's in here, so you probably already started looking into Barview. You're going to find that every single Barview provider is going to have some things in common. One is a comprehensive program that helps you prepare for all the components of your bar exam experience. The others is that it's going to be based on the NCBE content. The NCB is the National Conference of Bar Examiners, and they're the organization that creates the exam. And so they provide kind of a scope of coverage for what is going to be tested on the exam, and every single course should cover all of that content. And then also there are released questions. My dad always used to say, practice doesn't make perfect, but perfect practice makes perfect. Now we know we all can't be perfect, but the whole point is to do real time assessment of yourself. And so included in Helix, you're also going to see released NCBE questions are the exact questions that you people have already taken um, on the bar exam that you'll use to practice, okay? So Helix will encompass all of these foundational things that are found in Bar Review. I also want to point out for you what traditional Bar Review has looked like. Bar Review has typically been for years, at least 30, <laughs> maybe longer, uh, approach where you take 10 weeks of study, of that 10 weeks, seven weeks is dedicated to what you see here, lecture, uh, reading of outlines, and then review. And the way your day is broken out is quite similarly listed. So what happens is at the end of the day, once you're really tired from sitting and watching a three-hour or four-hour lecture and reading outlines, um, all these really passive things, you jump into review and practice, which is the most important component. And so that's usually tapped in at the end of your day. A lot of people end up tabling it and they don't even get to the practice or the review, which is the most important component. Well, not only do we want to create an affordable at cost bar review course, but we also wanted to create something that was different and more effective and more engaging. And what we have found as an organization, we love to look at research, the most important modern learning science. We've taken all of that information and tried to figure out what's the big difference that is needed in this space. And what we found is that the, the real key to bar review success is the amount of work that any student is able to kind of put in that's intentional, effective, and active. And so we've designed Helix Bar Review intentionally to really deconstruct the traditional model and create a more active and engaging uh, experience that will maximize your learning through bar review study. So you'll see an example of what that looks like here. We've taken these little tiny chunks, now we've broken them into smaller pieces, and now we've also rearranged them so you can prioritize things that are really effective uh, with for your learning, such as review and practice. Um, there's testing opportunities built in intentionally at various intervals to make sure you're testing at the right time of, uh, in, in terms of your learning. We also provide reinforcement opportunities for you to go back and review all this content um, in an intentional way. So I can't promise you this, bar review may not be fun. I, it was fun for me because of the people, right? It is tough. It's a tough experience, but it can be more manageable and it can be kind of more engaging to do. And so that is really what we've aimed to do with this Helix approach. So to summarize, and I'm gonna show you a few images, um, I'm looking at my time, but to summarize, we really tried to bring Bar Review to life. And we've done it in a few different ways. I've just mentioned and showed you that integrated content approach. We also have focused on taking you away from those three or four hour lectures and built in innovative, short, targeted videos. There are a host of 
workshops and webinars that not only show you the what is important in bar study, but the how to do it. And that really is a game changer in moving you through your study process. We'll have really interactive, engaging ways to interface with the system, including gamification. That was a big thing. This is truly a bar review product that was built by all of you. And I say that meaning law students, we spoke with hundreds of administrators um, and students who have taken the bar and, and uh, studied for the, this. And one of the things that came out was gamification, something more engaging would be important for them to use. So you'll see these here on my screen right now. Excuse me, you'll see the online interface. So this first one is the web browser, which you would see when you log in online. The other is a mobile app. We have a fully functioning mobile app. So I don't know about you, but it is important to move and sometimes be on the go. Maybe you want to go for a walk. Um, you can use both the the platform in your mobile app that is fully functioning or online on your phone, kind of listen to things as you move around. I want to show you some snippets of the different components that I was talking about. Outlines are key. You got to learn the law, right, when you're studying through bar review. And so our active outline, interactive outlines will have the core black letter law that's so important and pivotal to your learning. But things I love about it is that it also is more strategic because it's going to show you right away how to apply that law. I don't know how many times if you have gone through and gone, okay, this is great. This is the rule. What do I do with it? And right away, you're going to see that. So there's a core bar inquiry right here on this page that shows you this is how they ask the question on the exam. And then we have all these drop throughs and expansions where you can see examples as you learn the content of how to apply that law in real time. So it really helps you stay connected and engaged with the material, but also learn it right away and how it applies in those questions. We also have focused outlines, focused review outlines that are going to take all that black letter law, also combine it with the frequently tested content that pops up on the exam. And we give you this base. Um, a lot of times in bar review, you're working to create this base called a final review outline, and you'll have it by the end of your study. Instead, we start you at the beginning with this content that's most important. Um, and it's interactive. So you can fill in PDFs, fillable PDFs to um, add your learning in as you go. Um, and we also have a Helix book bundle where this will be printed to you. If you like the tactile, you can write everything in there and build that tool out as you go. So the outlines are a game changer where they really do give you the information you need right from the start. And then videos are still an important component of a uh, law or bar study. Uh, it gives you an opportunity though with Helix to have a few different ways to engage with videos. We're gonna have the substantive law videos. They're gonna tell you what the law is um, over a discrete topic. But we also have these videos that are visual explanations. And this is a bit different. They give you hypos of the content that you're gonna see. And then most importantly, we have some skills and strategy. Earlier, Leandra mentioned it strategy does really change everything, whether that's your financial strategy or even on your bar exam study process, how you go about this is so important. And so we'll have skill and strategy videos that help you uh, navigate each component of the exam. And there are three. There's the multiple choice component, the essay component, and the uh, performance test, which is the MPT component. Okay. So I want to show you just a quick snippet of these videos. One of my favorite components are that they're very different. So you'll see here some examples here. We have some that are professors, right, that come from your law schools um, and talk directly to you. In fact, I think the woman on the screen is from Howard University. There are some Howard folks in the audience. Um, there are videos also that show the hypos and the different illustrations, so a lot more engaging to listen to. And again, they're all short videos, about five to ten minutes in length. Some of our strategy videos are a little bit longer. Um, most don't go past about 20 minutes to help you move through any given skill um, area. So I also want to talk about self-assessment because one thing we know, and from the time that I worked, I see some shout outs down there <laughs> in the chat. From the time I worked with students, though, one thing that was really critical in bar review study was um, how effectively you are able to go back and review the work that you do. So we built that right into Helix Bar Review. You're seeing a snapshot of our modules page, um, and that's going to show you how to navigate through all the content in the course. But more importantly, right there on the right-hand panel of the screen, you'll see these bars that are indicated with high, medium, or low. These are actually your confidence levels. So after you create... Uh, complete each component of the course, it will ask you to mark your confidence level in that section. And then you can go back and search the entire course based on your confidence level so that when you go back and reinforce your learning, you can do it strategically. Some days we need a, a, a lift me up 
So go to those high areas and review those. Some days we have to dig in, right? And really review the things that we need to focus on so you can go and navigate to your low uh, content area. So one way that you can self-assess yourself. All right. I wanna talk really briefly about practice questions because again, those are so important to bar study. There's a few different forms that we have. This first one here are our building block questions. They're just questions about the black letter law and they're foundational to start to understand all the rules that are involved in bar review studying. They will help you then prepare for what we call exam prep MCQs, which are those exam questions, right? Earlier I talked about the license questions that come directly from the NCBE. So with those, we have all the ones that are licensed from the NCB and available now, but we also have a host of questions that we created in-house. And the cool thing is we were really lucky or smart, I don't know which one you wanna call it, to hire the director of the NCBE who actually her job was to write these questions. So not only do we have the license questions, but we have all the questions, or we have the questions in-house designed from the person who was originally tasked with designing those questions. So you're gonna get the questions that are closest aligned to the actual uh, NCBE questions. In addition to the multiple choice questions, essays are, just, are so key. And so we're gonna have essays and tools that help you self-assess yourself. There are graded essays included in the course that will be graded by licensed attorneys, um, but there are, are gonna be tools that help you evaluate your skill set in that. And so I'm gonna show you just a couple of those. Model answers are pretty standard. Everybody, every bar review course is gonna have those model answers, the perfect answer with all the content you need to know. But what sometimes is more important is what we call the issue highlights. These are one, sometimes two page um, overviews of the essay that just give you the bare minimum, give me the point <laughs> that I need. Hit the high issues, hit the rules and all the important content that you need to review. And then we'll also have the grading grid, which will break out uh, line for line that model answer so you can know where to actually give yourself points. I don't know about you when I when I study and reviewed essays in schools the hardest part was figuring out did I get this it's not written exactly like this line so really this helps you figure out how to give yourself scores and we even have guides that talk about how to assess your learning as you navigate through this part of studying. And then finally, I did mention that there are some flashcards and we have our game center and an achievement center all designed to really just help you stay engaged with the content, take a little step away from the uh, traditional review piece and move into a more engaging component of the course. So really quickly, I need, I might need a time check. I think we're at five minutes. Is that right? <laughs> um, so you're right. You got five minutes and you are doing great. Okay. <laughs> A quick summary is that uh, our Helix course is a complete course. I didn't share that it's already open for this bar review course. It opened last week, uh, about 10 days ago, meaning that you can get into early access. I already said earlier that bar review is traditionally 10 weeks. You can get in sooner if you want with a Helix course and start to work on that content earlier. Um, mobile friendly, book bundle, I already mentioned all that. Uh, the one thing I didn't talk about was that we also have exclusive Helix Pass classes that jumpstart your study. They show you exactly Exactly how to approach each component of the exam before you even dive in. Um, there's also supplements, and I'm only highlighting this, uh, Madam, Madam President, because if you were to win a course here today, you do have a choice between the UBE course, right? There, most jurisdictions are UBE, and that comprehensive course I just talked about is the UBE course. We are also designing a Florida course and a California course. They won't be ready for another year, so I'm sorry if you're there. But if you are in a state that doesn't have the UBE, you could use one of these supplemental resources. You could use our MBE course, which is just multiple choice, or flashcard sets that are going to be printed. Um, so just want to highlight those there. I'm going to pass the time but before I do. I want to say if you want to see any of this, go to helixbarview.org and I'll drop that in or, uh, the chat and you can take a free sneak peek at the course. And it's going to be a snippet, but it'll show you all of that. You'll be able to see an essay, see the answers, all that good stuff, as well as our Helix NPRE. So we are one week away from the NPRE exam if you're taking it uh, and need a course to study with, tons of practice questions and a really great attack outline. So I gave you three minutes. I'm sorry, Madam President, but I will pass it to you uh, to hand that out. Thank you so much. I'm putting our email there if you want to ask me any questions or I'll hang back in the chat. All right, awesome. And these presentations were fantastic. I know that I learned a lot, especially as someone who has living loans. I'm like, how do I pay that back? But also lastly, just learning about this bar review uh, prep course. I think this is absolutely amazing and so accessible. And speaking of accessibility, so earlier on, I asked um, in the chat for 
all my 3Ls and even made more clear uh, for those that are taking the July 2022 bar, um, you'll be eligible for our bar giveaway. So thank you to everyone that put their names in the chat um, for everyone. Like the last one, the last 3L was put in at 426. So I put it in a randomizer and here are the results. You know, I'm doing a little drum roll on my counter. Oh, um, our, first <laughs> <laughs> our first winner is Bianca Pickering from Northeastern University School of Law. Our second winner is Leslie Hughes, and I apologize if I butchered anybody's name, from University of Oklahoma. And our third winner is Ladara Lee from Miles Law School. So these are the three. If you all can please send me an email at chair at nabalsa.org so I can connect you and make sure that you all will receive your packages. Um, but also everyone, don't um, be worried because we have three more that we're giving away. Um, so we wanna just give up individuals an opportunity to win um, three bar review courses throughout this um, session and thank you so much to Access Lex and more specifically like Helix Bar Review just for being so generous to provide full packages. And with that said, um, throughout the entire convention for individuals that are low income or struggling to pay for a bar review, um, we will be distributing those as well. And you'll be receiving email communications um, from myself via like our listserv for just instructions on how to qualify for that. And then you will know whether um, you were selected by tomorrow more than likely and then you'll be announced also recognized at our gala on saturday and with that said thank you all so much for attending please join our next presentation at 4 45 so 15 minutes from now which is our sports and entertainment panel by mince levin we have so many phenomenal um, sports and entertainment attorneys as well as representatives from vanguard so we had we have so many great things in store. So I look forward to seeing you all there. And thank you, Access Lex and Helix Bar Review. And I've also congratulations on another successful convention. <laughs> thank you. Bye, everyone.